The screen flickers to life, static crackles. The Allfather's son, the enigmatic online persona, is about to stream. His usual cryptic backdrop is gone. In its place, a dimly lit hall. The air crackles with anticipation. Then a figure steps into the flickering light. He is Ragnar Lothbrok, the legend has returned. Ragnar's voice, deep and resonant, cuts through the digital static. Ragnar, for too long the world has forgotten the might of the Northmen. Ragnar, the time has come to reclaim what was once ours. Ragnar, to remind the world of the strength, the courage, the sheer ferocity that flows through our veins. Ragnar, the old gods have called upon me to lead you to glory. His words echo with the thunder of a thousand longships. The camera pans back, revealing Ragnar is not alone. Standing beside him are three figures, Galactic Gaming, Grandpa, USA, Milresh, the Allfather's Son's most trusted moderators. Ragnar, these are my Jarls, my trusted warriors who will lead you to victory. The chat erupts with pledges of allegiance. The world has been shaken. The legend of Ragnar Lothbrok has returned. The camera focuses on Ragnar's face. He turns and walks deeper into the hall. He stops before a veiled alcove. Ragnar, the old gods are generous. They have bestowed upon my Jarls gifts of power. Ragnar pulls back the veil, revealing three sets of armor, each more magnificent than the last. These are artifacts of myth and legend. Ragnar gestures towards the first suit of armor. Ragnar Galactic Gaming, son of the stars, step forward. Galactic Gaming approaches the armor. With Ragnar's help, he dons the armor. Ragnar, this armor is forged from the heart of a dying star. Galactic Gaming raises the double-bladed sword in salute. Ragnar turns to the second suit of armor. Ragnar, Grandpa USA, wielder of Excalibur, your destiny awaits. Grandpa USA steps forward and draws the sword. Ragnar, this is Excalibur, the sword of kings. Grandpa USA raises Excalibur high. The chat erupts in cheers. Ragnar turns towards the final set of armor. Ragnar, Milresh, master of the unliving host, embrace your destiny. Milresh approaches the armor and touches the staff. Ragnar, this staff commands the legions of the dead. Milresh slams the staff into the ground. The chat falls silent, a mixture of fear and awe. The internet explodes. The Allfather Son's live stream becomes a global phenomenon. News outlets latch onto the story. Social media melts down. Governments scramble, trying to make sense of the situation. The world holds its breath, caught between disbelief and unease. World leaders reconsider the Allfather's son's claims. Galactic Gaming, Grandpa USA, and Milresh's presence sends chills down spines. An emergency summit is called. Leaders from every nation gather, united by a common threat. The atmosphere is tense, thick with suspicion and fear. Some advocate for diplomacy, others call for a show of force. The world watches and waits. The initial shock gives way to disbelief and apprehension. Whispers start small, doubts creeping in. Is this an elaborate hoax? But deep down, a primal fear takes root. The impossible has become possible. The world finds itself united in the face of an unprecedented threat. Military forces are mobilized. Scientists work feverishly to understand the technology and magic. The world holds its breath, bracing for the inevitable. For the first time, there is a single unifying purpose. The question is, can they stop the Allfather's Son? The air crackles with nervous energy. Ragnar's Jarls are in a Viking war room. Maps cover the walls. 
Ragnar, they believe they can stop us. Ragnar paces before a holographic projection of the earth. Ragnar, they will learn the hard way that the old ways are not so easily forgotten. Galactic Gaming adjusts his position. Galactic Gaming. Our forces are amassing in Norway. Ragnar China first. We will shatter their illusions. Grandpa USA and what of the West? Ragnar Washington DC will fall. Their precious capital will become a pyre. Milresh, his dark armor absorbing the light around him, stood apart, his shadowed face unreadable. He leaned on his staff, the skull at its top pulsing with a faint, eerie glow. While the others spoke of conquest and bloodshed, he listened to different whispers, felt the pull of ancient forces at play. The Norns, the weavers of fate, were at work, their threads intertwining, guiding them all towards an inevitable conclusion. The dead stir, the hunger for battle, for the chance to once again taste the blood of their enemies. I can feel their power growing, their numbers swelling. Soon, nothing will be able to stop them. Ragnar, sensing his unease, placed a hand on his shoulder. Have faith, Milresh. The Valkyries guide our hand. The gods have chosen us for this task. We will not falter. Milresh met his gaze, a flicker of doubt in his eyes. He had seen the visions, the tapestry of fate woven by the Norns. Victory was not assured. The path ahead was fraught with danger with unforeseen consequences, but he had sworn an oath to Ragnar, and he would see it through to the end, no matter the cost. The time for planning is over, Ragnar declared, his voice echoing with the thunder of a coming storm. He turned towards the camera, his gaze piercing the lens, connecting with the millions watching around the world. The fire in his eyes burned brighter than ever, fueled by an unshakable belief in his destiny. To those who stand with me, your king calls upon you. Take up arms, prepare for battle. The world will tremble before the might of the Viking horde. Galactic gaming, son of the stars, you will lead the charge in the east. Crush the armies of China, tear down their walls. Show them the true meaning of fear. Grandpa USA, wielder of Excalibur, the fate of the West rests on your shoulders. Unite the people under your banner, reclaim what was stolen, let freedom ring with the clash of steel. Milresh, master of the unliving host, unleash the fury of the underworld, let the dead rise to fight by our side, show the world the true meaning of death. His voice echoed through the war room, through the internet, through the very hearts of his followers. A new Viking age was dawning and Ragnar Lothbrok, the Allfather's son, would lead them to glory. The Great Wall of China, once a symbol of impenetrable strength, now seemed to tremble under the weight of a thousand years of history. The setting sun cast long, ominous shadows across the ancient stones. From the east, a low rumble grew, sending shivers down the spines of the bravest warriors. It was not the thunder of cannons, but something far more primal. The sound of Viking longships crashing against the shore, war drums pounding chaos. Galactic gaming in star metal armor stood at the prow, soared aloft. The runes on his armor pulsed with an otherworldly light. He had left behind the digital battlefields and stepped into a legend, no longer just a gamer, but a Viking Jarl leading his forces. Behind him, Viking warriors, faces painted, oars slamming against the water. They were a force of nature, unleashed upon an unsuspecting world. As the longships drew closer, Galactic Gaming raised his sword, energy crackling. He was a warrior reborn, forged in the fires of a new Viking age. The streets of Washington, D.C., usually bustling with tourists and politicians, were eerily deserted. The monuments stood silent, dwarfed by the shadows of a gathering storm. A piercing cry echoed, sending flocks of birds scattering in terror. It was the cry of a thousand eagles, their wings blotting out the sun. Clad in gleaming silver armor, Excalibur held high, I stood at the head of a vast army, ordinary citizens transformed into warriors by the promise of a return to strength and honor. Grandpa USA, his white beard flowing, his eyes blazing with fury, surveyed the scene. He would be their shield, their sword, their avenging angel. Excalibur hummed with power, its blade glowing with a fierce golden light. I had always believed in the American dream, 
in the promise of freedom and justice for all, I would use the legendary blade to carve a new path, to forge a new destiny for my people. As the eagles descended, their cries echoing across the city, Grandpa USA raised Excalibur higher, its light banishing the shadows. He was a beacon of hope in a world teetering on the brink of chaos. The African savanna, a land of breathtaking beauty and untamed wilderness, echoed with a silence more profound than any roar. The animals had fled, sensing a disturbance in the natural order. From the heart of the savanna, a whisper arose, slithering through the tall grass. It was not the hiss of a snake, but something far more ancient and insidious. Clad in dark, rune-etched armor, I stood at the edge of a vast plain. The skull at the top of the staff pulsed with an eerie green light. I had always walked a fine line between the worlds, but now that line had blurred. Milresh closed his eyes, feeling the power of the underworld surging through him. The ground beneath his feet hummed with dark energy. He was a necromancer, a master of the unliving, wielding a power that terrified even him. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting the world in a tapestry of shadows and uncertainty, a hush fell over the planet. News reports, filled with grainy footage and panicked speculation, ceased their incessant chatter as if even they recognized the futility of words in the face of such primal forces. In homes and shelters, in palaces and prisons, people huddled together, their faces illuminated by the flickering glow of screens, their hearts pounding in unison, with the drums of war. The world had watched in horror as the Allfather's son, the once mythical figure of Viking lore, had stepped out of the digital ether and into their reality. They had scoffed at his claims, dismissed his threats as the ravings of a madman. But now, as the dragon prowled towards the Great Wall, as the eagle cast its shadow over the seat of American power, as the serpent uncoiled its skeletal form upon the African plains, they understood. The old gods had returned, and the world would never be the same. The first rays of dawn illuminated a scene of chaotic beauty. The Great Wall of China, for centuries a symbol of order and impenetrability, was now a battleground. Viking longships, their dragon prows stained with seawater and blood, had breached the defenses, smashing through fortified gates as if they were made of paper. The air was thick with the smells of salt, smoke, and the metallic tang of blood. The wall itself groaned under the onslaught, ancient stones crumbling under the impact of siege engines and the sheer fury of the Viking attack. Each swing of my blade is a dance of death, a testament to the martial prowess of a warrior born in the digital age and reborn in the fires of ancient legend. Chinese soldiers, their discipline shaken by the ferocity of the Viking assault, fought back with the courage born of desperation. Arrows rained down from the watchtowers, only to be deflected by enchanted shields or the shimmering aura that surrounded galactic gaming. Cannons roared, their blasts tearing holes in the Viking ranks, but for each warrior that fell, two more seemed to take his place. The defenders, outnumbered and outmatched, fought with the tenacity of cornered tigers, but the tide had turned. The dragon had breached the wall and chaos reigned. The Washington Monument, once a proud symbol of American idealism, now cast a long, ominous shadow across a city in chaos. The streets, once filled with the hustle and bustle of democracy in action, were now littered with debris and the bodies of the fallen. The air thick with smoke from burning buildings and the stench of cordite echoed with the clash of steel on steel, the cries of the wounded and the chilling war cries of the Viking invaders. Excalibur, its blade ablaze with a light that seems to banish the shadows, cuts a swath through the ranks of the National Guard, the Secret Service, and anyone else foolish enough to stand in my way. I have not come for senseless bloodshed, but to reclaim a nation that I believe has lost its way has strayed too far from the ideals upon which it was founded. Grandpa USA, his silver armor reflecting the flames that danced around him, stood amidst the carnage, a beacon of righteous fury in a city consumed by chaos. And yet as he looked out over the burning city, a pang of regret pierced his heart. Was this the only way? Was this the price of freedom? 
No, he banished the thought. This was a necessary evil, a purging fire that would cleanse the nation of its sins and pave the way for a new era of American greatness. An era ruled by strength, honor, and the unflinching will of the All Father's Son. The African savanna, once teeming with life, now echoed with the silence of the grave. Animals had long since fled, escaping the unnatural chill. The air crackled with dark energy, the ground unnaturally cold. They were unstoppable. Their hunger matched only by my ambition. I warned them, those who scoffed at the old ways. Now I will show them the true meaning of fear. Milresh in dark armor stood at the heart of it all. The army of the dead stretched out before him, a vast legion bound to his will. Across the globe, televisions flickered to life, their screens filled with images of unimaginable horror. The initial shock had given way to a dull sense of dread, a creeping realization that the world as they knew it was coming to an end. The news anchors, their voices strained with disbelief and terror, struggled to make sense of the unfolding chaos. In homes and shelters, in places of worship and dens of iniquity, people watched in stunned silence as the world descended into chaos. The old certainties, the carefully constructed illusions of order and security crumbled before their very eyes. The impossible had become reality, the unthinkable their present, and at the heart of it all a single figure, clad in furs and leather, his eyes blazing with a terrible light, addressed the world. His voice, amplified a thousandfold by the technology he so despised, boomed across the digital airwaves, a declaration of war, a promise of a new world order. This is the dawn of a new Viking age, Ragnar Lothbrok roared, his voice echoing across the globe. A world where the strong will inherit the earth, where the old gods will be appeased in blood and fire. Submit or be destroyed. The world watched aghast as the live stream continued. Ragnar's words echoing across the globe were not met with the expected fear and capitulation. Instead, a different kind of fire was ignited, a fire of defiance. Humanity faced with an impossible foe, an enemy that shattered the very foundations of their reality, found a new resolve. In the bustling metropolises of the modern world, where steel and glass had replaced timber and stone, a primal instinct for survival took root. Citizens, once complacent in their routines, now banded together forming makeshift militias, their eyes burning with a desperate hope. They knew the odds were stacked against them, that their weapons were no match for the supernatural might of Ragnar's legions. But they would fight nonetheless. For their homes, for their families, for the future that had been so brutally ripped from their grasp. The lines that had divided nations, cultures and ideologies for centuries blurred, then vanished entirely. Old enemies found themselves standing shoulder to shoulder, united against a common foe. Political differences, religious disputes, and economic rivalries faded into insignificance in the face of an existential threat that transcended such petty human concerns. Ragnar watched the world's reaction with a mixture of amusement and disdain. Their defiance only strengthened his resolve. He had underestimated their resilience. So be it, he muttered, his voice carrying the weight of a thunderclap. They shall choke on the ashes of their world. He raised his arms, roaring to the heavens. Let the rivers run red with the blood of the unworthy. Let the skies burn with the fires of our conquest. The age of the Viking has begun. The live stream ended abruptly, replaced by a static image of Ragnar Lothbrok, his face frozen in a mask of triumphant fury. The world watched, holding its breath, caught between a past they had long forgotten and a future they could scarcely comprehend. From the ashes of the old world, a new order was being forged. An order ruled not by technology nor by diplomacy, but by the raw, primal power of the Viking spirit. The lines between myth and reality had blurred, then vanished entirely. The old gods had returned, and with them a new dark age had begun. The world was no longer a place of nations, of borders, of carefully constructed ideologies. It was a battleground, a vast, unforgiving arena where the strong would prey upon the weak, where the victors would write the history books in the blood of the vanquished. 
And at the heart of this new world order, a king sat upon his throne, his gaze sweeping across his ravaged domain, a cold smile playing on his lips. The All-Father's Son had returned, and his reign had just begun.